So we're looking at an animation of the green phosphine rings. That initial cloud was cortical slow waves. These rings are sleep spindles. So the thalamus has the synchronous activity that puts the body to sleep in the second stage of NREM. And there's usually between three to six or seven of them, and they occur in short intervals. But we're going to take a look at the textual evidence, the ancient texts, the chariot of psychomysticism. In Ezekiel, we have the vision of the Ophanin, the thrones. I looked and I saw beside the cherubim four wheels, one beside each of the cherubim. The wheels sparkled like a barrel, a green stone. The Merkaba, which means chariot, and in later Kabbalistic mysticism, they talk of a special cherub. It's a vision of an iris full of color and dark in the center. In the Rig Veda, we see the three-wheeled chariot of the Asvins by mental meditation construct it. So that the chariot is this initial vessel that's going to bring you into this mental, psychomystic landscape. The green phosphine rings are the initial stage of a broader mystic visionary experience. They imagined it as a firebrand, as wheels, as a chariot, um, like chakra means wheel. And so that the gods are riding these sort of chariots, and these visions are that same kind of chariot bringing a person to these ecstatic experiences, these divine revelations. We'll see it as chariots, as fire, as peacock, as serpents. Sleep spindles are extremely interesting, and there's still a lot we don't know about them. They happen every time you go to sleep, and their presence actually helps to cut off external stimuli. They're also really important for dreams and memory recall and even chronic pain. There's links to chronic pain and reduced spindle burst activity. They can even happen during waking consciousness in asynchronous bursts. So when you're sleeping, they're synchronous and it shuts off the body. Here in the Upanishads, we see that the body is the chariot and the objects or spheres of sensory perception are the track. Hildegard's visions imagined the world as a wheel, and she spoke of the viriditis, or the greening power of God. There's also this interesting meteorological phenomena called the green ray. It's when the sunrise or sunset goes over the sea, and there's a brief moment where there's a green sort of flash. And you can imagine that this became part of that lore, especially as a chariot that pulls the sun and as a psychopomp, the progression or passage of souls into the afterlife. Jacob Bohm had visions as well, and he described the Godhead as wheels within wheels. The reduced sleep spindles have also been tied to dementia and Alzheimer's and schizophrenia and other psychological and neurological disorders. Here we see the Jade Emperor's Mind Seal classic. The elixir is called the Green Dragon and the White Tiger. The seven apertures in our body interpenetrate, and each emits wisdom light. There's also these widespread cultural symbols of the Ouroboros, a circle of a snake eating itself. The Eye of Horus was a green painted symbol that Egyptian priests meditated on, invoking the green one to lead souls to the underworld. The Dreamtime Rainbow Serpent, which goes back tens of thousands of years, moves through these sacred water holes. It moved through these spirit rings, which were often green or purple. In the poetic Ada, we also have the Bifrost, the rainbow bridge that takes you to the home of the gods, the sort of psycho-mystic land. We're also reminded of Odin, who gave up his eye for wisdom, which is just more of that ocular theme that relates to this wisdom light. What we also have to keep in mind is this is a neurological mechanism, meaning that it would be possible and plausible that it's experienced by people all over the world through different time periods. We're seeing the religions and the beliefs and the poetry inspired from these visionary experiences. Again, keeping in mind, these are usually the initial into a much broader set of phosphines. A divinely inspired consciousness enabling you to hold the reins and handles of the poetic thought. These are from Zoroaster. We have more images of chariots and fire. And I call down the green one, your intoxication and your might and obstruction, smashing powers and your talent, your healing, your furthering, your increasing, your all adorned wisdom. In Buddhism, the simile of the chariot is important to explain the concept of not-self or an Atman. Gautama's enlightenment, which we get such a literal idea of that now, was depicted as green, and Buddha as well was often used in green images. Mayan rituals involved witnessing the vision serpents, and when the Aztecs adopted that, they associated it with Quetzalcoatl, which is a feathered serpent of the Aztec, 
and the Quetzal itself is iridescent green. Broadly speaking, in shamanic practices, they would be initiated, or as a prerequisite to become a shaman, have to experience light visions. Sometimes they would lie back in concentration, or they would be worked up into an ecstasy with drums. The shaman is shining or filled with an inner light is a widely spread idea. And they often wore masks or headdresses which obscured the vision in different ways. Chinese alchemy, we have the elixir efflorescence of immortality. And these visionary ideas of cloud souls of the sun, orbed phosphors, green glare, revolving auras. To summon celestial beings, they arrive in flying clouds, in green chariots and rose gem wheels, their streaming essences glittered with gemmy light, flashing penetratingly throughout the grand void. We have this jade emperor and green elixir and green dragon, and the idea of thrones and chariots as ways of carrying you to these psychomystic landscapes. Riding his flying chariot of the three elemental colors, followed by void traversing carts and myriad dragons, he will inspect the three celestial timekeepers as the light of heaven all shine forth. Seven colored pneumas will rise from your head, and your face will have the jade like glow of metallic efflorescence. If you hold your breath, immediately a chariot from the eight shrouded extents of the universe will arrive. It's psychomystic, but it's also psychocosmic. It's related to the stars and the heavens and the divinities. Muhammad has visions of lotus tree flowers, of this green rings, essentially. And these were often given by Gabriel, who gave many visions to people. He was known as the peacock of angels, and often depicted with the eyes of peacock, which we just saw up there in the blue-green phosphine ring. And we also have this idea of the emerald tablets. An alchemist who was in a cave received this emerald information, this wisdom light. And this isn't a judgment or debunking of any god or belief, simply that there is a neurological mechanism from which these visions occur. They all consider it to be wisdom and poetic and healing and immortality and an experience of an ecstatic divinity. So that there's certainly more to it than simply saying that it's just light, but there is something more to this light. The Tibetan Book of the Dead, shining as the green light of the all-performing wisdom, dazzlingly green, transparent, and radiant. Praying thus, thou will merge in a halo of rainbow light. In Natural Liberation, the same person credited with the authorship of Book of the Dead, between your eyebrows there is the so-called lamp of pristine reality itself. It appears like the colors of a rainbow or the eyes of a peacock feather. Inside that is the lamp of the empty bindu, and it is like the concentric circles of ripples when throwing a stone into the pond. In the yoga of the psychic heat, meditate upon the four wheels, each shaped like an umbrella or like the wheel of a chariot. In Sufism, green light is a symbol of mystical travel. The pearl on Mount Kaf, which is a, again a psychomystic landscape. The tuba tree symbolizes life and its fruits are the archetypes. It is upon this tree that the Simorg has its nest, that being a peacock, phoenix type of bird. The pearl is a moving sphere of green light. Other Sufi mystics mention an epiphany in green. Al-Qaidra, the green one, an immortal spiritual teacher who operates in the unseen worlds beyond the conditions of normal life, the ever-living archetype of direct divine inspiration. It is he that the Sufi mystics often encounter. What meditators actually see during this experience is a supernatural green light ringing the mouth of a dark well. Its atmosphere is a green light, through which flow waves eternally in movement toward one another. Medieval poetry, we have an author coming up with the Pearl and Gawain the Green Knight, which may be related to the above. The Pearl is about a dream in which the narrator falls asleep in a green garden and is transported to an otherworldly garden. Al-Qadir is called the Green One, and he is the teacher of prophets. Ignatius of Loyola, a form in the air near him, and this form gave him much consolation because it was exceedingly beautiful. It somehow seemed to have the shape of a serpent and had many things that shone like eyes but were not eyes. St. John of the Cross says to place the green vestment, the living color of hope in God, and the helmet of God which blocks all vision except for that which sees upward to God. A friend pointed this out to me, and maybe it's coincidence, maybe it's synchronicity, but we have this helix nebula, the eye of God, and it has that same green and blue ring. I know I've talked about some of these things before, but I kind of wanted to put it all together and just run through it one more time with the phosphenes and the ancient texts.